Hello, I'm Dr. William Lanier, Professor of Anesthesiology at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. And today I will share with you an editorial published in the December 2014 issue of the Proceedings entitled Sleep Medication Failure and Newly Diagnosed Obstructive Sleep Apnea, the Role of Brain Function Modulation by Muscle Afferent Activity. The editorial in which I am first author was intended to introduce an original article by Craco et al which reported the results of a retrospective evaluation of 1,210 patients with insomnia disorder. All 899 patients who were taking over-the-counter or prescription sleep aids had pharmacologic failure. Of the 942 patients objectively tested, or 77.9% of the total cohort, 860 of those, or 91.3%, met standard criteria on average for a moderate to severe sleep-related breathing disorder. The authors also evaluated a standard screening technique commonly used in primary care medicine, and it yielded a false negative result for breathing disorder more than 30% of the time. The Craco et al. report focused on the diagnosis and treatment of this association among sleep disorders, obstructive sleep apnea, and failure to sleep augmenting medications. They did not, however, focus on the underlying pathomechanisms. That is the purpose of our editorial. I am joined in this editorial by co-author Dr. Kanan Ramar, Associate Professor of Medicine in the Division of Pulmonary and Critical Care Medicine here at Mayo Clinic. And his participation is significant in that he is also a member of the faculty of the Mayo Clinic Center for Sleep Medicine. In our editorial, we divide the pathomechanisms proposed to underlie the Craco et al. findings into two components, the affrontation theory of cerebral arousal and other mechanisms such as alterations in blood gases and stress hormones. Affrontation theory predicts that agents or maneuvers that produce muscle stretch or contraction of extrafusal striated muscles or that directly stimulate muscle stretch receptors, primarily the intrafusal muscle spindles, will stimulate the brain. In contrast, agents or maneuvers that lessen muscle stretch or contraction tend to stabilize brain function or encourage its quiescence. Amusingly, the affrontation theory of cerebral arousal has its origins in the research of Nathaniel Kleitman, who is widely credited as being the father of sleep medicine research. He outlines some classic studies in his textbook, Sleep and Wakefulness, published in 1963. In his textbook, he outlined studies performed in his laboratory years before, in which he encouraged human volunteers to avoid sleeping for prolonged periods. He found that those individuals who were encouraged to ambulate and move around the room could stay awake for many days. However, when they were allowed to become recumbent or encouraged to become recumbent, they fell asleep almost immediately. Those who continued to move were able to stay awake many days and much longer than those who were recumbent. We now know the basis of this effect identified by Kleitman. We believe it relates to muscle afferent receptors, particularly the muscle spindles. When we perform mechanical work, A-alpha motor neurons innervate extrafusal striated muscle fibers causing them to contract. Resting within the collection of extrafusal striated muscle fibers are the intrafusal fibers of the muscle spindles. Muscle spindles can become activated by either mechanical muscle work, passive muscle stretch, or direct stimulation by drugs such as the depolarizing neuromuscular relaxant drug succinylcholine. When these receptors are stimulated, they in turn stimulate the brain. We describe how this mechanism occurs in our editorial. The same effect can be achieved by directly electrically stimulating afferent nerves that carry the sig signals from the muscle spindles. In our editorial, Dr. Ramar and I provide what we believe are fascinating and amusing research findings involving research in humans and laboratory animals and we provide anecdotes to help readers better understand baseline cerebral physiology and how it is altered by muscle afferents and how these afferents are likely responsible for much of the effect reported by Krakow et al. 
We also address the potential influence of blood gas alterations during obstructive sleep apnea and also the role of stress hormones. In aggregate, we believe that the role of blood gas alterations and stress hormone alterations during obstructive sleep apnea have a very minor effect on the results of Krakow et al. And instead, affrontation theory is more likely to predict their results. Finally, we discuss how our speculative synthesis relates not only to the discoveries of Krakow et al., but how it also relates to identifying the ideal therapy for those findings in the Krakow study. We argue that the most effective and safest approach to treating patients like those described by Krakow et al. is to use positive airway pressure, not increasing the doses of sleep augmenting drugs. We also offer findings from the index medical literature to support these views. In closing, we hope you will enjoy reading our editorial, and we hope it will introduce you to an intriguing branch of scientific research that has relevance to not only sleep medicine, but also wakefulness and attention during normal daily activities. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.com. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.